Hej, eh, välkommen till Rogaland Kunstcenter och vårens första livestreaming i programserien Praxis. Praxis är er en serie arrangemang som sätter fokus på olika former för kunstnerisk och akademisk praxis. Det är er en arena hvor kunstnere och kulturarbetare kan dela och ta del i kvarandres metoder, strategier och tänkning. Mitt namn är er Tove Komedal och jag har glädjen av att introducera årets Stavanger kunstner Ananda Sarné. Hon är er född i Rotterdam i 1988 och kom till Stavanger i 2016. Ananda är er Stavanger er årets Stavanger kunstner och hur ska få lov att presentera sig själv. Välkommen. Tack. Uh, hello everyone, thank you for listening to me this morning. I will talk a little bit about my work that I made in the last four and a half years since I graduated. Um, before I studied art, I briefly studied literature and linguistics. And I think that's something that's still quite present in my work. Um, I, for example, often work with things like storytelling, translation and miscommunication. And another thing that's very important in my work is that it's often informed by walks, conversations, and collaborations with others. For instance, with biologists, vocalists, or translators. Uh, we'll first talk a little bit about my work, Echoist of the Takase River. I made this during a residency in Japan in 2016. Uh, while I was there, I met this amazing group of singers. Uh, I made the work together with them. It became a video in the end. And the work focused on the Takashi River, um, because in the 70s there were a couple of dams built in that river. And I talked to a lot of people about the construction of these dams, but also particularly about the vegetation, the plants that grew there uh, in the 70s and that died during the construction of the dam, but also new ones that popped off popped up after. I was reading a lot about it and talked to several people. Uh, I got a lot of help with translation, of course. And I started thinking a lot about the words echo and echolocation, uh, because I was very interested in, for example, bats, who sent out a signal, um, and then it kind of bumps into a moth but yeah, they feed on knots. And when it uh, sends back the echo, they kind of know where their prey is. So yeah, they can't see, but they just, through listening, they find out what's going on around them. I found that very fascinating. Um, yeah, so I was talking about these things a lot during my residency. And then the people working there, they told me about the translation of the word echo in Japanese. But also that Kodama in Japanese folklore is a phenomenon that, um, that occurs in mountains and valleys. And it kind of, yeah, they think that spoken words reflected against the landscape are thought to be answers from trees. So yeah, I had all these things in the back of my head. And then I talked to these singers that I met. And I asked them to screen the names of the plants in the landscape where the dams were built. And yeah, we were listening to the echo afterwards. And then yeah, together with them, I made the video Echoist of the Takase River. It's three minutes long, and I'll show you a bit of the video now.
Hari ini So one of the people you saw in the video is a sign language translator. Um, I also asked her to sign the word for echo. Uh, and I thought it was intriguing that one word, echo, translated into three images. Uh, so then to the next work, in 2018, I uh, well this is only a selection of my work, but so in 2018 I did more things, but among others I made a work called Glass Ears. Uh, which was uh, an ear made of optical glass. So um, this is normally used for making glasses, for example. Then in 2019, I worked on a longer research project again. Uh, it's called Night Scented Flowers. And instead of um, working with bats, I became now very interested in moths. Um, yeah, I was still thinking about echolocation a lot. Um, but also in relation to moth, because some of them have uh, fur on their wings. So when the bat sends out this signal, it kind of gets trapped by the fur uh, because um, it absorbs the sound. So they are kind of invisible for the bat. And I really like the word uh, acoustic camouflage. Um, yeah, and also I work a lot with textiles and it's also because of this moth, I think. Uh, because, yeah, it's very important to me that textiles absorb sound. Uh, then I went on several walks with biologists and insect enthusiasts into the woods looking for moths. Uh, I learned a lot about how moths are very attracted to artificial light and to street lamps and that it's quite harmful for them. So this is during one of these walks with the biologist. And then at the same time, I started looking up what moths feed on, um, or yeah, what things they pollinate. And it's um, a lot of flowers that are active at night. Um, so I went out again at night to look for these plants with an infrared filter on my camera. And I took pictures of these plants. And afterwards, I took these images to the textile museum in Tilburg in the Netherlands where I asked them to translate these uh, images into files that the digital loom there could read. Um, so yeah, the pixels of the image basically got translated into threads. And that resulted in these two tapestries. Yeah, at the same time, I was thinking so much about uh, moths circling around the lamps. I was also thinking about human beings looking at computer screens and the light coming out of computers. Um, so the tapestry also referred to a moth that got stuck inside a very early computer. Uh, computer pioneer Grace Hopper found in the 1940s a moth that was literally stuck in inside one of her early computers. Uh, and in her notebook, she referred to this moth as a bug. So this moth moth could be seen as the first software bug. This is another picture of the tapestries. Um, they also have light reflective yarn in them, so if you take an image with um, your flash on, it looks like this. Then in 2019, I went on another residency. This one was organized by the Dutch Mondrian Fund. It was at Bamboo Curtain Studio at the outskirts of Taipei in Taiwan. Uh, 
Um, this is how it looked like. It was very important to me that it was at the outskirts of a big city because I was working with insects living in cities at the time. Yeah, and I wanted to know how they would um, yeah, function in a man-made environment and how they would communicate with each other. This one was living at the residency. And I started out again by going on a lot of walks with people who knew a lot about insects. Uh, this was very close to the residency. So that's, yeah, the outskirts of Taipei. Uh, the people I went on walks with pointed out all these nice things, like this little tent made by a caterpillar. I also met several biologists. Uh, one of them had a big collection of insect architecture. Uh, this was made by a wasp, for example. And yeah, he had several pieces of wasp housing. Uh, yeah, so after gathering all this information, I went out and took field recordings on my own of the insects. But I was also introduced to a personal archive of insect recordings by one of the biologists I met. And he made uh, insect recordings, for example. And it also was heavily amplified, because normally we can't hear the sounds they would produce, so he amplified them. And then at home, I would read about... Um, yeah, when I was reading novels, I was really interested in how... Uh, insect sounds or animal sounds in general were described in these novels. For example, this is Virginia Woolf. Uh, cheap chirp, cheap chirp. And then I translated these things that I found in the novels into an embroideries. These are cricket sounds, for example. This is at Bamboo Curtain Studio. And all this work also um, resulted in the video, A Caterpillar is Gold in a Green Ring, where I again worked with sign language translators. And I was very curious how it would look like if they would sound, uh, sign insect names. Uh, yeah, so it was the sign language translators, but at the same time, I also filmed a lot of insects that lived in Taipei and around Taipei. And I worked with the recordings, both that I got from the biologist and that I made myself. Uh, I will show you a one minute clip of the video. Then I continued working with insects. Uh, I worked with the sounds that I got from the biologist that I met in Taipei. And um, yeah, he had such a big collection of insect communication. Um, and I was very curious what would happen if I put, would put these insect sounds inside um, transcription software that is usually meant to transcribe human speech. And so I had all these sound files, and then I could also choose whether I wanted to have it translated into Spanish or English, and I chose English. And this is what came out. This is not fiction. It actually said, look, 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 look at the people. 
And then I reworked this text into a performance called Duet Songs. Uh, I asked Signe Irene Thieme and Annette Galein at Studio Sutton in Stavanger to perform this text. I also dyed the textiles myself. Uh, they're dyed with use, uh, it's UV sensitive, so I placed them in sunlight. And it looked like this. And I also asked two uh, classical singers to perform the text. So they, for example, worked in opera. And this was performed at Studio Titanic in Finland. And I'll show you a one minute excerpt from that. Oh, oh. After the performance, this um, was also made into a publication that I made together with graphic designer Elena op het einde. Uh, yeah, we made a publication that could be read by two people at once, so it could be read from both sides. Uh, this is how it looked like out in the wild. Uh, then of my, one of my most recent work is called Sleep Talking, that I made at the end of 2020. Uh, this work started out in the summer when I went for a walk with botanical philosopher Norbert Peters. This is in the botanical garden in Amsterdam, where he's pointing out several flowers to me that are active at night. Uh, here he's holding an evening primrose. At the same time, I became very interested in other small organisms that have a day and night rhythm. And I, for example, got to know about cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. That is the simplest organism currently known to have a day and night rhythm. So cyanobacteria also have a blue pigment in them that I use for coloring textiles. And this pigment is also part of the photosynthesis in cyanobacteria. So it's again referring to uh, reacting to light. Uh, this turned into an audio and textile installation, for example, here at Stavanger Kunstmuseum. Um, I colored the textiles with several pigments, for example, uh, from cyanobacteria but also indigo and cyanotype. Uh, 
And yeah, as I said, there was also audio in the space where I was showing it. Uh, I asked singer Signe Irene Thieme to sing a lullaby. And I was specifically interested in the fact that lullabies are supposed to be soothing. Uh, but then because I was filming her, uh, she started to forget parts of the song. So it kind of became something you have to rehearse in a way, the lullaby. Um, yeah, so I have an eight minute video of that. And I think it's a good way to end this talk. Uh, so I'll show you the video now. So we kring du Gamle lykle moder di mi Gamle lykle moder mi Seint kom heim Med bjølla si Så i kring om deg Du må takke Så i kring deg Liksom det var fare på Så i kring om deg så i kring deg Liksom det var fare på Det såg ut som det var nå Kanskje nå du ligger da Mang du så i kring du Så i kring du Så i kring du Mangt er rødde da med deg Så i kring Mangt er rødde da med deg Vesle lykle moder di Seint kom hei med bjølla si Titt du, titt du skutne Titt du danser kring om meg Liksom det var fare på Titt du danser kring om meg Liksom det var Gamle lykle moder di, sein kom heim til guten sin. Så i kring om meg du, så i, så i kring om meg du. Liksom det var fare på. Det så gud som det var nå, kanskje nå du ligger da. Titt du danser kring om meg, mangt er grødde da med deg. Vesle lykke, gamle lykke. Glemoder di Seint kom hei med bjølla si Titt du danser kring om meg Nei, nei Fare på, fare på 
Liksom det är bara att föra på. Ha. Liksom det. Tittu Mangt Liksom Liksom det Gamle Lykle moder mi Seint kom heim Med bjølla si Liksom, liksom det var fare på. Det såg ut som det var nå, kanskje nå du ligger da. Titt du danser kring om meg. Mang dig rödde då med dig. Gamle lyckle moder mi, sent kom hej med bjölla si. Titt mang. Gamle lykle moder i sein kom hei med bjølla si. Så, så i, så i kring. Liksom det var fare på. Blå man, blå man, boken min. Seint kom heim til guten sin. Bjørnen med sin låtne fell, kan deg taka seint i kveld. Gamle lykle moder mi, seint kom hei med bjølla si. Så i kring neven over, liksom det var fare på. Det såg ut som det var nå, kanskje nå du ligger da. Titt du danser meg omkring, titt du. Så i, så, titt du danser meg omkring, titt du, så i kring du, titt du danser kring om meg, da mangt jeg rødde da om deg. Gamle vesle moder, sen kom hei med bjølla si. Yes, so I will continue working with the sonic possibilities of language and day and night rhythm in the coming months. I will have a solo exhibition, for example, in a Brine Kunstverening in September, so you can see the result there if you're around. And apart from that, I want to say thank you for listening to me today and have a nice Thursday.